The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin. And uh, go ahead and feel free to give me a call right here at TFNN. And make sure you are listening in, of course. Um, on TFNN.MOBI, when you're out and about, you can reach me right here at 877-927-6648. Again, that's 877-927-6648. And again, this is the Diagnostic Trading Hour, where we talk about how to maximize leverage, minimize risk, and be one step ahead of the markets. And, of course, we maximize leverage and minimize risk by using Nadex. And, of course, you can do anything you want to, but I personally prefer to trade Nadex. And if you go over to TFNN.com, you can see the Nadex banner over on the right side of the page. Nadex, when I say trade Nadex, what I mean? I was like saying I, I prefer to trade CME. All right? It's an exchange. That's all it is. It's just an exchange. Okay? But every product on this exchange has 100% defined risk and has insanely massive leverage, which means the trade can go for you with leverage but can't go against you with that same leverage. So if I go in there, uh, you know, w without uncapped risk, that is. So I can go in and I can put a trade on to do a buy or do a sell, and the market can go against me. Oh, like, let's say if I buy, and I buy on the open, like I bought this morning, okay? And um, so I went in and did a buy this morning right here. And let's see, I'll pull the chart up if I can find the time frame on there. At 9.30, okay? So I'm looking at doing a buy right here at 9.30. And uh, obviously a little bit nerve-wracking because, I mean, the market dropped 50 points last night on the S&P, bounced back up about half of that. And um, I came in and, you know, I had a seasonal buy. And uh, it was bounced back up. So I'm like, you know what, I think we'll go, go ahead and get that bounce. And I put the order in to do a buy. Well, I mean, then, the you know, the whole thing moves like eight points against me. Okay. Well, no, actually nine points against me on my trade. But I can't get stopped out. I have until 4.15 to be right. All right. And so I put the trade on, the market moves in my favor, and I'm able to actually make some money. I take profit on the trade. We didn't see a short setup. We talked, we called that out actually on the bull bear binary out this morning. Uh, Tommy called up a short. And uh, so it goes short and then comes on back down. And now I've actually flattened that position out uh, just recently here. So I just flattened it out. So I was able to get a long and a short and was able to go in on the market. Even though the market was going down, I was able to buy, and the market was going up, I was able to do a sell, but without the fear of being stopped out. So I had time to be right. The first trade, I mean, if I was in the you know NASDAQ, easily could have been stopped out on that trade, but I wasn't because I was using the Nadex Exchange to trade the NASDAQ. And you can use it to trade the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500. Um, you can use it to trade the Russell 2000. You can use it to trade the Dow. You can use it to trade gold, silver, copper, oil, natural gas, um, corn, soybeans, you can use a trade euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, pound yen, US yen, euro yen, US Canadian, US franc. I mean, there's a lot of things you can trade over on Nadex. So it's just an exchange. The thing is, you don't have to go through a broker to get to the exchange. You go direct to the exchange. And they're registered, regulated by the CFTC, all that fun stuff, just like the CME is. Uh, but you can hop on over there and you can trade direct with them, which means you don't pay broker commissions. Pretty nice. So all you have is exchange fees. By the way, you don't pay for platform fees. You don't pay for data fees. You don't pay for chart fees. None of that stuff. All that stuff is free over on Nadex. And if you want to learn how to trade Nadex, hop on over to TFNN.com and uh, click on the diagnostic uh, box spread analyzer right there. Click on that. And uh, what I do is I actually teach you how to trade Nadex binaries, Nadex spreads. I give you my daily diagnostic deviation levels. And uh, get, you get those actually up front at night. And uh, so you know what the expected move is by the market. How far does the market say the market's going to move? And it's insanely right over and over again. And you can use these levels as take profit zones, potential reversal zones, and um, definitely as trolling stop areas. And they, they just work very, very well. And then also, of course, you get access to the, the live uh, box spread analyzer for Nadex spreads on all these major markets we just discussed. And they're not call spreads. They're not put spreads. They're not vertical. They're not debit spreads or credit spreads or calendar spreads or diagonal spreads or calls or puts or, you know, whatever. They're their own type of instrument. They're more like trading than like market. Imagine you need to trade Friday expiration options. If you're an option trader, okay, if you're not, then ignore what I'm about to say. But imagine getting to trade Friday expiration options every single day that are in the money. 
Okay, that's more what it's like trading on the Nadex spreads. Okay, the second they get into the price where you bought them, then from that point forward, it's like trading an in the money, deep in the money spread on Friday, meaning your delta is like a one. So you're getting all that massive buying power, but you're not paying for premium for one or two or three weeks. You're not putting 3,000 up to place a trade. You can put up 30 bucks to place a trade. We had a short trade we put on this morning on the bull bear binary hours, like $26 to place that trade. So, um, and $26 risk, and the market can't go against you. So there's just a lot of good things about it. Check this out. You get a two-week trial. You can hop on right now. Um, you have some time off for the holidays. You want to check some things out. There's some videos in there. There's a Q&A section in there. Um, if you need access to know how to get access to Futures Data, um, Futures Platform, Forex Data, know how to get access to all that for free, just hop on in there and then just um, ask me in the help desk. I'll let you know exactly how to get access to that. It's reply to somebody today. So, hey, go here to get your platform free. Go here to get your Futures Data free. I mean, we're talking 500 bucks a month. That's a $6,000 value all in itself, okay? More than the cost of this thing for the entire year. But uh, say you have to save $6,000 in Futures Data fees. So hop on in there, uh, check out the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer, get access to these great tips and tools and education. And um, any questions you have, I'm like I said, I'm here for you. So uh, we got the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer. So let's go ahead and see um, with that covered. Oh, you may want to make sure, too, that you go in and you get your Tiger Dollars. So don't forget about that right now. If you are going to subscribe, go ahead and hop on here. And again, that's two weeks free. But then go ahead and check out the Tiger Dollars before it is up. Last date. All right. So uh, they left it up here. They're giving you just a little bit more time, but you better hop on and grab it now. Get that 25% discount and get 10% donated to the Salvation Army. But you got to hop on and grab it before they take it off the site. It is a great deal. All right. So we got that on up. Let's go ahead and see where are the markets at right now. And uh, it'll be fun to go through this one today, right? So uh, we got the S&P right now. It is down 21 points. We got the NASDAQ down 42. We got Dow down 180. And as big as those numbers seem, they are anything compared to the spikes that we saw last night. And uh, we got the Russell down 11. We got gold up 12 points right now. And we got copper is about up about a percent. And silver is up 1.3. We got corn up $3. We got soybeans up 22. We got oil down a buck 60 on the day right now. Natural gas is basically flat on the day. Euro dollar is uh, pretty flat. So, I mean, or not flat, sorry. <laughs> Euro dollar is actually down 72 pips. Uh, pound dollar is down 112 pips. And uh, so it's the, the one of the big, or if not the biggest currency mover right there on the day out of the major currency pairs, looks like. We got Aussie dollar down 60. We got U.S. yen down 24. We got U.S. franc up 59 and U.S. Canadian up 56. And if somebody likes to say that is King Dollar in full action right there, that's King Dollar going to town and uh, doing really, really well. So, and then uh, the DAX or the uh, the DX, they have the dollar index showing that we're up uh, 38 uh, right now. So 0.38, about half percent on the DX. So that's the basket currency index against the dollar. So they measure multiple currencies against it. Anyway, so lots of market movement going on. And um, basically, if you you know if you've had your head in a hole or something like that, and you don't know what's going on, the uh, House basically scrapped their plans to do the vote on the Plan B. Boehner came on and he said, "Hey, you know what?" And like literally a one less than one minute press conference, he's like, "House is going to pass this, and if Obama doesn't want to get the Democrats on board, he could be responsible for the largest tax increase in history." And then he basically shuts down the mic and walks off. Um, and then the problem is they're going to do that vote last night. And then they figured out at the end they didn't actually have enough people that would vote for it, that would approve it. And so they had to scrap the entire voting plan until after Christmas. Um, now, some of that could be to people being gone. The other part could be couldn't get support, may need to make some changes, whatever. But at the end of the day, that basically showed that there was there was no plan. And, th I mean, they had to get this thing, if they even got it, they have to get a whole, all the legislation written through the House, through the Senate, and get enough people to approve on both sides, and signed by Obama and all that stuff in like a matter of like you're talking like a few days. So I think the chances of this are you know very small. Uh, the market obviously agreed and was not very happy with it. We'll see what happens if they're able to pull off a last minute thing. Um, but <laughs> it's I mean we got fiscal cliff, we got taxes going up, we got a bunch of irresponsible congressmen, and you know at the end of the day, irresponsible America elected. The exact same Congress they couldn't agree for the last two years. It's like, seriously? So, um, you know, I blame them, but, you know, our people elected these people again. After they did such a horrible job the last two years as a whole, they went and put the same people back in place with the same balance of power. So it's like, everybody get on one side or the other, but this whole, like, split Congress thing is obviously not working. Um, anyways, so back on topic. 
And uh, but that I guess that is on topic, right? That's more topic than anything is right now. Looking on over where the markets are at, you know, we know what happened last night. Um, going on into today, we had the current account on the pound, and that was at 4:30 a.m. And um, also had public set net borrowing and final GDP. So let me go ahead and I'll pull up a quick chart on that one for you. We like to look through the charts as we're going through the news reports just so you can see the reactions on how these reports do play out over the time here. So let's go ahead and pull that in. And all right, then I also like to go in and look at 10 minute bars if I'm using minute bars. Um, and, uh, you know, I use Thinkorswim, I use Ninja Trader. So just depends upon what I am trading, what I'm doing. So for what am I trading, I'm over here in Ninja. Um, for if I'm just doing regular calls and puts, I'm in thinkers one. But for forex futures, I'm usually over in ninja. So um, anyway, so that's a question I get a lot: is what platform I use. So we got the pound dollar. It had the current account come in. Current account actually came in better than expected for the pound, but the public sector net borrowing came in much worse than expected. Um, final GDP also came in worse than expected, and um, so their revised business investment sentiment, whatever, that came in a little better, but that's like a non-factor. But final GDP coming in worse, and public sector net borrowing coming in worse was very negative for the pound. Again, that came in at 4.30. We go right over here, that's 3.30 uh, central time here. And you know, you didn't. it took a little bit for it to wake up, but when it finally decided to realize that this is how it was gonna be, it, it just sold off slow but sure. But I mean, you're talking a pretty massive drop right there, a total of 121 pips in all uh, from yesterday's close on the pound dollar. So a lot of dollar strength, probably the dollar strength more than the pound weakness, but there was some definite pound weakness in those reports. And then we also had sort of some crazy action going on with the U.S. Canadian. And I talked about this. Uh, I was like, watch out, because there's going to be some movement on this thing. I guess, you know, 7.30 um, Central, okay? So 6.30 Eastern over here. We'll go right here. 7.30, there we go. All right? I said, we're going to have like eight reports. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight reports coming out on the U.S. dollar and Canadian combined. I was like, so there will be some major volatility on that. We got some good volatility. We got enough, you know... I guess for, you could call this major for you as Canadian. It's not the biggest moving pair usually, but we got a solid 35 to 40 pips just, just from that news. So you had a great news trade. You could have hopped in, easily played some deviation, uh, straddles on Nadex. You could have, I mean, there it was long all night. You could have, you know, the dollar in itself was long. So you could have easily hopped in and just went long the dollar on the U.S. Canadian, and you had plenty of signals to go in on that. But it was a, was a great trade to take advantage of. And uh, that really is all we got for the news reports for today. And then, of course, Saturday is going to be quiet. Sunday, uh, bank holiday. Japan is going to have um, the emperor's birthday and uh, holiday. And then uh, we're going to go over into Monday. And uh, Germany is going to be closed for Christmas Eve. And New Zealand and uh, Australia are going to be closed for Christmas Day. So, and then uh, 25th, of course, we got Christmas across the board. 26th, we got Boxing Day. So stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. It's a little uh, fun fact trivia. You've been here in Boxing Day, and if you're in America, you probably are like, what in the world is Boxing Day? Is there any like boxing matches? People pummeling each other? What's that about? Basically, it's just a follow-up day to Christmas. So it's, uh, you know, the multiple days of Christmas. We ought to celebrate it here. I think we should bring that tradition home, too, you know? So uh, basically it's just another day to sit around and, you know, hang out with family. Um, and uh, there's a lot of different theories on the tradition, but the, the bottom line tradition usually it comes back to there were boxes put out at the churches, and then um, all the coins that were put in those boxes for the poor were opened on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, and then the, those proceeds were shared with the poor. So... Uh, but there's, you know, there's several different, you know, theories on the origin. Um, also, St. Stephen's Day um, is also celebrated that day as well. And uh, so St. Stephen being the first uh, Christian martyr to be stoned to death for his faith, um, recorded in biblical history. So, um, but yeah, it's very, uh, you know, pretty cool. Just, you know, a lot of good traditions, good times with families. And, um, you know, so definitely check those out and, you know, look into them. It's always fun to learn about some of the holidays that other uh, countries are observing. As you're a trader, you got to become more and more aware of them um, simply because of the fact that when you're going into that, uh, you know, it, it affects the, their, their banks are closed. All right. So it affects the markets. And uh, so just, you want to be very aware. Then, you know, also on Wednesday, we have the, uh, what is it? The target gets closed. So for the same holiday as well for boxing day. So the target system, when that target system gets closed and that's the, uh, Basically, it stands for Trans-European Trans Automated 
real time gross like basically gross settlement express transfer. So it's not a perfect acronym. But um you got the trans European, I guess, you know, auto, auto yeah, trans European automated, I guess. I, trans European is gonna be your T. Automated is gonna be your A. I'm having a hard time with this one. Real real time's gonna be your R. And then a uh, gross settlement is gonna be your G, and then express is gonna be your E and transfer is gonna be your T. But basically it's the system they use for transferring, you know, gross settlement. Of whatever we it doesn't even matter they're gonna be closed um but anyway so you can go into that and you can look more into just look at the target system if you want to and you can find out more about it but it doesn't really matter it's just shut down so it's going to affect all the fx and uh, also it's going to affect liquidity on the market as well okay so be very careful um let the holidays be more about the holidays enjoy okay we trade all year it's okay to take a few days off i think trading is one of the few professions i talked about some of this the other day as a trader as a professional trader i was I think trading is one of the few professions where we almost look at holidays as a bummer because <laughs> we're like, oh, the markets are closed. And we just we love what we do. We love trading. And so, you know, it's it's really interesting to see that, uh, you know, see that mentality in traders. You know, people are like, oh, I'm getting off for the holidays from their jobs. And we're like, oh, man, the markets are closed. I wonder how we can take advantage of that. What do you mean all the banks are shut down? That ain't cool. <laughs> you know? So it's sort of funny. Uh, just to see how, you know, traders react, uh, just to holidays in general, no matter what holiday it is. And uh, so, you know, got St. Stephen's Day, which is awesome to celebrate that. You got Boxing Day, time with family. And then you got uh, Christmas Eve Day, of course, time with family. You got Christmas Day, time with family. And, of course, the ultimate reason would be to celebrate the birth of Christ. And uh, even though it didn't happen exactly at that time of year, it didn't really matter. The whole point is just to, you know, stop and remember um, that, you know, God loved us. So, you know, and I'm just... I don't know what your faith is, but we're all free to share it. And that's one of the great things about America. And I just, you know, that's the biggest thing we have to remember is uh, the gifts. And um, that's the ultimate gift. So moving on forward and looking at the other things right there, we're going to go ahead and see what the deviation levels have done for the day. All right. And I'll pull those up and we'll check them out. So right here, what we have is we're going to start off with the S&P. And uh, when we pull those deviation levels up, there we go. We got the S&P right now, and it looks like we had a deviation move expectation. Oh, I gotta, we got to turn on the overnights for this because, man, the markets move so much that uh, you got to see this. It's just, look at that. Just bam! Um, you know, something interesting, deviation level, the third deviation, which means there's only a 0.3% chance it'll break. Okay, a third deviation level. That was 1389.4. Check this out. I mean, where it is right there. I mean, it's so close. But it actually did not break the third deviation level. Isn't that interesting? So, stats, they work. All right, so, uh, you know, we got that one. If we just take that out of the way, sort of where we've been hanging out at the bottom here, 14, 15 or so. And um, that puts us at, like right at one and a half deviation. One deviation for the day is 1423.5 which is right about here. And you can see that sort of being a little bit of a resistance level at first. And um, so really a resistance level between the one and a half and the negative, negative one and negative one and a half. All right. So stay right there. We'll come back. We'll roll through the other uh, different futures markets, forest markets, and get you caught up on where everything is. Be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And we're just going through right now, we're wrapping up the deviation levels. And uh, so let me see what we got right here. All right, so looking at each one of the deviation levels, and I had them up. There we go. All right. So we just talked about how it stayed with inside that three deviation mark. So that was just an impressive note. I like to point things out when they work right. <laughs> so don't we all? And uh, let's see here if the charts will get around to loading. Also, I can pull it up over here, I guess, if that one wants to take its time. And uh, we got the NASDAQ here, and it dropped down pretty far. But it actually uh, kept a little bit more in check than the other ones did. Um, if you check this out right here, it actually didn't go down near as far as the S&P on that. Um, but let me see. Here we go. It was the S&P that really had the hard sell-off and the bounce back. And NASDAQ um, only fell, like only, right? Only fell to 26.37. And uh, that actually was a perfect one and a half deviation mark. I mean, literally to the tick. One and a half deviations. And uh, you can also see that on here where I've drawn them on the charts. And you go in there and you can just see like right, I mean literally to the tick, right to it. And um, so just a great zone right there, great buy zone. And um, that's, you know, we hopped in and we bought, I bought the U.S. tech this morning, um, early morning. And then uh, sold out around 1030. Um, and then let's see here, going on, looking at the Dow. The Dow moved down a little bit more than uh, NASDAQ did, but we got a low of 12.963. And on the Dow, we were looking for a low of, 
let's see, 12.963 would have been actually two deviations, so 12.971. Um, it's two deviations, but it's kept a support level right here around 13.056 or so, and 13.045. It's a little bit lower. This actually would be one and a half deviations. So at this level, actually, that's probably better now that I look at it, if you look at the two lows it hit. So one and a half deviations, perfect support line for you. And then one deviation being on up to 13.119. And that puts you right about in this range right here. So check that out. I mean, one and a half, perfect to one, back down to one and a half. Back up, went up a little higher, and then now it's just sort of oscillating in between. So by the way, you know, if you're not out of stuff, it's probably time to be out. <laughs> so I fly out all my positions now. Um, a little bit back there. Look on over at the Russell. So the Russell moved on down. It kept most of its lows there. It had a low of 837. And uh, we look at that 837. Was, it wasn't even quite a half deviation. So there was a lot of volatility built in. Um, we got a little bit low over here. Let's see if we got there. We got 836.1. Still not half deviation. One and a half deviation would have been um, 835.6. So we got 836.1. So I mean, just, you know, maybe half a point off of that, but not bad. And then um, if we go up to one deviation, that's 841.4. So right around here. So this is a one deviation mark. And you can see as it did hit that, it stopped there, came back up to it, literally just respected that one deviation over and over and over again. It looks like it's working on finishing at the one deviation. Most of them are looking like that right now. Um, looking at natural gas, checking that out on natural gas there. We've been up to a high earlier today of 3.508. And uh, 3.508 would be a 0.7 deviation, 3.510. So just right off of a 0.7. Pretty small movement. I'm usually not expecting a big move on natural gas anyways on Fridays. Um, and then uh, oil, you know, uh, let's see here. Only if the dollar moves a lot do we expect oil to move a whole lot. Um, and then so right here we got a low of 88.19. On oil, 88.63 would be a one deviation. So we did get that. And it pulled right back up to 88.63. So like right here we can see it broke it. That's where you tighten your stops. And, um, you know, you can see it. Basically you caught the overnight move. That's about it. Um, Gave that on back up. Now, if we go over and look at gold, so gold doing just some interesting stuff today. But uh, gold right now, it's looks like closed out on its highs over here, high of sixteen sixty point five. Looks like that's the high of the day, sixteen sixty point five. On gold, we had a move expectation up to sixteen fifty eight point eight. So that had been a one deviation. So when it hit that one deviation, sixteen fifty eight point eight, then we would have tightened our stops. And that would have worked out fine. It would have pulled back down, pushed back up. Either way, you would have came out about the same, but at least you would have known you had the profit versus seeing the market move against you and come back. So perfect one deviation move right there on gold. Look on over at silver. Silver had a move on up to a high today of, looks like right around here, being 30.325. And on silver, we had an expectation of 30.15. So 30.15, about right at this point, we'd be looking to tighten our stops when it hit this bar. So it hit that one. You could have left it on. It just oscillated back and forth. You had some good profits on that trade. And then looking on over at copper. On copper right there, uh, flew on up. We hit a high of 3.579 there. So copper 3.570 was a one deviation. So as soon as it hit this, we tighten the stop. And it just sort of goes flat. But you got a nice move on copper. And uh, I mean, I'm just telling you, I don't know if y'all are using these things or not yet, but if you're not, you should be. And uh, I think you're, hopefully you're starting to see the pattern, all right? They work. <laughs> um, looking on over here at corn, and uh, the number one way they work is they help you tighten your stops, okay? They help you have a realistic profit goal, I guess number one, and then they help you tighten your stops, number two. Um, hi, 704.75 on corn and corn. We were looking at a move 704.4 and then 707.7. We didn't hit the 707.7. We did get the 704.4. So if you were long corn last night, you would have tightened it. And um, it, you know, nothing else happened. You would have got stopped out. So you'd basically be done with that long trade for the day unless it broke up to a new level and you got a new entry. Um, and then looking on over here, that's corn. We got soybeans. So on soybeans right here. And uh, again, all these levels are posted every single evening right here in um, the members area. But uh, you go in here and check out. We had a high somewhere around like 1433.25. It's like our, our high. Maybe not. Yep, 0.25. 
So 1433.25 on soybeans and 1433, actually 0.3 was one and a half. So you could have tightened it at 1433.3, which you would not have got right up to the end of the day. But you also would have tightened it at one deviation, which would have been at 1425.1. So it hit that level right here. I'm sure the first time I hit it. Okay, so it hit it right here. So you tighten your stop here. And then when it hit this bar, you tighten it again. And basically, you're getting to close out pretty much on the highs of the day. So it worked out really, really well for helping you manage your profit. And um, that way you can get maximum profit, but also have something to help you, you know, know where to let profits continue to rise, too. Um, so that's soybeans. Looking on over at Aussie Dollar. All right. So we got Aussie Dollar over here. Aussie Dollar moving on down to 1.0409. And on Aussie dollar, we had expectation 1.0409. 1.0410 was one and a half deviations. So uh, it actually just tipped it. You tighten the stop. You pull, pull perfect low right there on the Aussie dollar. And then at 1.0440 was the other stop. So right when it broke that level, right here, okay, then you're tightening your stop. And I mean, it just worked out to be a great trade. So you also could have tightened it right here. You would have got stopped out. And then when it broke down, you got another short trade. And so when you got the second short trade down to the one and a half deviation, you could have tightened it again. So you could have captured that move, and you could have captured basically that move from there to there. So it's a pretty sweet trades there on Aussie dollar. And then we got USD Canadian. Um, USD Canadian, it flew on up to 0.9952. And uh, 0.9952 was a total triple deviation break. Okay, meaning there was only a 0.3% chance it'd break 0.9944. So this level right here, only a 3% chance. All right, if it obviously broke it now, it gave it back up before the day was over, but there's only a 0.3% chance it would go that high. And as I've been saying for like all week, listen to the archives, I'm like 8.30 a.m., USD Canadian, eight announcements happening at once, this thing is going to move, and it did it, blast it out. So you should have made some good money on that trade. Um, hopefully you were in there and you were taking advantage of that. But, I mean, it busted through all three deviation levels. And that just doesn't happen that often. I mean, that's why it's a 0.3% chance, okay? Um, anyway, so that's our USD CAD. We got our USD Frank. So USD Frank uh, came on out at a high uh, 0 0.9178. 0 0.9178 would have been almost a one and a half deviation, but not quite. And uh, 0.9162 would have been where we tightened our stops. So right up here when it broke that level you're tightening your stop, you're out, you're basically done for the day. I mean you could have taken another long but you'd just be sitting in there really flat wouldn't be up or down much anything right now. Um, looking at our yen trade. So we got the yen falling on down on its face there first off and it went on down to a low of 83.85 so again low of 83.85 US yen and uh, let's see here that puts us down to just past one deviation one deviation was a low of 83.94 so when it broke that level right here, you tighten that stop, and um, you're able to capture a majority of the down move on the yen for the day, and then it just goes into this crazy spastic movement that would not have been fun to trade. So, but a great nighttime trade for part-time traders right there. And um, dollar strength against the yen during that fiscal crisis goes down. You have a deviation level profit target. Awesome, it hits that. You go ahead and tighten your stop. Now, when I say tighten your stop on Nadex, you can't do stops. You can only do limits. So what that means is if it breaks the level, then you're going to get out. Okay? So that's where tighten your stops comes into on Nadex. Um, and then uh, let's see here. We got a couple other pairs we can check out. Let's see. We got pound dollar. So we'll check out the pound right here. It moved down to a low. And I mean, it just stayed on down. It's been a big, big mover today. We got a low on it of 1.6160. Okay? And uh, so on that, what does that mean for pound dollar? 1.6160, uh, almost two deviations. We need 1.6152 um, to hit it. And um, at this point in the day, if you're still short and you're waiting on that, because the last time you would have tightened it, let's see, it would have been 1.6184. So when it broke this level right here, you would have tightened right here. As a personal trading call, if you're short pound dollar, you know, I would be getting flat right now. I mean, it's Friday afternoon. It's, you know, Christmas Eve. Christmas is coming up. The markets ought to pretty much be done. Yeah, there could be a last-minute sell-off if you want it. 
but uh, I, I would sort of expect there to be nothing <laughs> for the next couple hours. So, but uh, I would be getting out of the trade right now. So I wouldn't wait for that next, you know, five ticks. Uh, you know, grab the profit you got. So, but a uh, very good trade right there on pound dollar. Awesome trade. I mean, just short all the way. And, uh, you know, I mean, they don't set up any prettier than that. And no matter what time you caught it, I mean, it was just, it was a nice trade. I mean, whether you started in it last night when the whole crisis happened or whether you joined it later, you know. And um, I love to use Renko bars because you get rid of all this mess right here. But uh, I'll pull those up. I'll show you how that works. It's pretty interesting. But uh, Renko bars, basically, they only make a bar. So you now you use a unique type of Renko bar. But um, you can always view the members or you can always ask me more about that. But... Um, you know, I like to look at them whenever, let's see here, let me just show you this. What they do is they only make a bar in the direction. So, like, this is measured at six ticks. So, only when the market moves, six ticks will it make a new bar. And so, you can see, like, this is the bar for all the noise since yesterday. And you got, like, all this mess, this sideways mess. Well, if I go over here and look at this from last night, like, this bar right here lasted, you know, two hours. So and when the market's barely doing anything over here, I mean, these bars are lasting, you know, less periods of time, different periods of time, but, you know, this one's lasting 20 minutes, that bar lasted 26 minutes, this bar lasted, you know, not even one minute. So the market started moving. And what I do is I, I take a simple, you know, it, since it cleans up the bars, you don't get all these crappy, you know, false entries. And um, so, again, I'll be looking for the E-bar. And the E-bar is basically when, the, when you have a new low and you're in a downtrend, okay, the market pulls up, then I'm looking to buy, basically sell below the previous bar. Um, so i got a new high right there. Once i got that new high, okay, that's going to be my entry. So I'm going to go short here. And that's one tick below this bar. So you go short at 1, 6, 2, 4, 7. And uh, right now it's 1, 6, 1, 9, 4. So not a bad trade for the day. And so you ride that one on down. And that's just this morning. Okay, you also had trades from last night. You could have been hopping into as well. So it, it's actually been short quite a while. So actually the last short we got, that was we had that short. The short we had before that actually came all the way back to yesterday morning, um, short pound dollar at 8.55 a.m. And um, so that was up at 1.6287. So, you know, nice, nice move right there uh, to take advantage of. And... I mean, it's just kept moving down, as you know. So I'll go ahead, I'll update it and get you the most current data. You can see where it's at on the moment here. Let me refresh it. Just got to add in the uh, FX data right there on this chart. Because as we know, it's lower than that. That was just this morning's trades. So we had the one from last night, and we had that one. And uh, as we know, we moved all the way down to 1.6163. So there we go. And I get the current data for you. So we had this entry, then we had another entry right here, another E bar, another entry, another entry, another entry, another entry, another entry. So, and uh, we're sitting right here at that two deviation level. I mean, we're very, we're just like, you know, basically it's time to get out. So if you're not out, you're out, get out. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I'd be out of the trades right now. And, uh, you know, you could be still tightening your stops if you wanted to. You could be playing each one of these uh, power lines or, you know, however you want to do it. But uh, that's, that's how I like to trade. It's very simple. It's one pattern. I combine my pattern with my bars, with my ball trend line, with my deviations. So that's basically the four essential things I use to trade with. And it uh, works pretty well. All right. Well, everybody have a great day. We'll be right back after this break and got a little bit more for you before we uh, move on to the next hour. But stay right there, and we'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus
prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Just rolling through each one of the markets and then just talk a little bit about the way that I like to trade. Um, I like to trade with the, uh, you know, it's basically a sell on the pullbacks and buy, you know, on the pullbacks or whatever. Or, you know, what is it? Buy on the dips and sell. Um, the market rises a little bit there. But I want to make sure I'm always going with the trend. That's very important. So you want to trade with the trend. I talked to a trader today, and they're like, why is it when you're doing these trades, man, you're making money. When I'm doing these trades, I'm not. Da, da, da. And I'm like, dude, you're fighting the trend. Because he's always trying to call a reversal. And uh, the number one way that most uh, retail traders lose is they they. They just call reversals based on gut instinct, what they feel, what they think, you know, and not what the chart says. So, I mean, you need to be using something like Fibonacci levels and know how to use them. Like, you know, like uh, Timing the Trade by Tommy O'Brien, great book. That's veto has got some great stuff out there. You know, Steve has some great stuff. But, I mean, you need to know how to use Fib levels correctly. Um, you know, the deviation levels, those are great. I, I wouldn't even call the deviation levels completely reversal indicators, though. I call them more expected movement indicators. I'm using them for taking profits. So um, I'm usually going to take the apex pattern for my entries, uh, and um, I am working on tying in more and more and more of the fib levels and learning the Gartley patterns and everything else. 
but um, tying those into my training, you know, to help out with some of that stuff. But I mean, this 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 works for me really well, and I'm always looking to you know improve it as long as I can keep it simple. As you notice, I don't load up a thousand indicators on my charts. Um, I think as long as you can learn chart patterns, you can learn you know expansion points like I use here at the deviation levels. Um, know how to read volume. You know, I mean, there's only a few things that you really have to know. And uh, if you can get those things down and get them down well and put them together and, you know, put the pieces of the puzzle together, then trading really starts coming together for you. It's when you try to put 50 different things on a chart and you can't, I mean, they're all conflicting, that that throws you off. Now, I do like indicators for, um, they, they can be helpful for stop losses. They can be helpful for winning not to get into a trade. Personally, I don't use them when to get into trades. Some people do, and it works for them. If it works, then that's great. Um, I found that they're, you know, they give me too many false signals or too late to the game, whatever. Uh, but they are very good, like, you know, just for, hey, you know, the trend is down, don't buy. <laughs> you know, so if I want to revert, if I want to do a reversal on a trade, I want to do it when I see the trend is actually going in the other direction. And, uh, you know, maybe my other stuff hasn't lined up, you know, so like the volatile trend line, I could look at that. You know, maybe I'm having long trades going on. Let's see if I can find one over here. You know, like right here, I mean, I'm not selling, Okay. <laughs> Now, over here, I get an entry, all right, and the trend line's going to go back down. Now, I got to sell, but I'm not going to go put in a sell when the market's rising, okay? And it's, it's pretty simple, but, I mean, that, that's how you get killed in trading, and uh, people do it all the time. Over here, so I'm buying, buying, buying. That's great. All of a sudden, the market starts falling. Well, I'm not going to take another entry on the buy side. And still not going to do it. Starts moving back up. Okay, I might consider it. Starts turning back down. Okay, I'm going to get out of that trade. Close to break even. Now we're going short. Hey, yeah, I love that. I'll take that short trade right now. We are at the top. Okay. You know, we find that out later. But, um, you know, simple trend line. <laughs> and uh, I call it a volatile trend line. It's the one that I use. And um, it just helps. Basically, it's very it's volatile. As you can see, it actually moves out of the way and all this other stuff on the market. But uh, I, I want it to be going in the direction of my trade. And so, because I'd be very tempted to go in and, you know, place, you know, a buy order or whatever, a sell order. I'm like, oh, this thing's going to go down. It's going to hit right here. It's going to go down. Well, it's still pointing up. Well, then it's still, oh, it's going to hit here. Well, it's still pointing up. Okay. Then it starts pointing down. Okay. Now I can hop in the trade. I'd rather give up a few, you know, ticks, maybe a point or so of profit um, on the trade by getting a little bit later, waiting on this thing to turn down than I would hopping in. And think about it. If you hop in four points early, and let's just say, you know, you're willing to take the stop or you're using Natix, you don't have to worry about it. Um, if you get in, you know, four points early, you also give it three points of profit. So give up the points of profit on the side where everything lines up. Don't give it the points of profit just because you want to get in early and you want to be the mastermind that beats the market to the reversal. So be one step ahead, but uh, don't, be, don't try to be four steps ahead because it won't work. All right. Well, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, and I will see you all after the break. Stay right here. we got the Power Trading Hour with David White coming up next. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to mastering probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.